Hey, what's going on, folks? It's me, Justin. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can create a big site, little time, low cost by using a data set and feeding information to some sort of AI generation tool to get factually correct articles in mass. So this is really coming from the perspective of uh, an affiliate site. You could probably do this for like an information if you want to do display ads, if you have your own product, if you have SaaS, whatever the case is, this is how you can get real information from, you know, from, you know, well, in this case, OpenAI's API. So here we go. Because uh, it seems like what a lot of people are doing are they're just kind of, I don't think it's necessarily wrong, but they just take, you know, a keyword or um, a keyword in an outline and just have it kind of generate something, whether that's factually correct, whether it makes sense, it's, it, it spits out something that might not always be true. And that kind of leads to some disasters. In my case, that's how, that's, I think that's how everybody starts um, off. Um, I remember like one of the sites that I'm pretty public with because I don't care about it is like an energy drink review site. Uh, and it was the test the bulk pub publishing spreadsheet and it would just kind of spit out, oh, this has these flavors. It, they don't really have those flavors or it has this much caffeine. It's a like 160 grams in one uh, or milligrams rather, you usually die uh, like 160 milligrams in one paragraph. And then three paragraphs later, it's a 40 milligrams. So it would just kind of spit out something. And, you know, I realized that that's probably not the best way of creating um, AI generated content. So again, that's not necessarily bad, <laughs> but it can be bad. All right. I think that just using like H2s or keyword can create some good content, uh, specifically uh, right here, information content that's not necessarily um, fact-based. I guess it's more opinion. Uh, this kind of all kind of meld together. Uh, example, you know, I don't think something like can dogs eat almonds should be AI generated because if that information comes out incorrect, dogs will die. Uh, something like how can you make money from digital art online? There's not a concrete yes or no answer to that. So if it spits out something that can be done, then who's to say that that's not wrong or not right. And is, you know what I mean? <laughs> so stuff like that informational content, that's not necessarily concrete, but it is more opinion based information, uh, opinion pieces. Again, like I just said, uh, something like, uh, why I think everybody should have a side hustle. That's, that's an opinion. There's no way to say that's right or wrong. Right. Also entertainment stuff. Uh, <laughs> man, like 15 reason why your ex hates your guts or something like that. Like it, it's, it's fun. It's fluff. It's nonsense. Somebody's reading that because it, it's, it's entertaining. They're not looking for, you know, how to do something. They're going, I'm looking to laugh. And as long as it makes me laugh, it's good. So that's what we got there. Um, but I think there's a better way, especially when it, when it comes to affiliate based content, you want to make money from selling somebody else's product or even your own product. This is in my not so humble opinion. Uh, and it's to feed data into the AI generation tool of your choice. So what it comes out with is factually correct. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, non-technical tech stack that I'm using because I'm not a developer. I'm not a programmer. I don't know, um, enough about Python or JavaScript or anything like that to, um, do this at a, in a way that's, uh, I guess proprietary. I'm using, I'm, I'm hacking together a few different things. And that is uh, a database where you can house the information, a way to generate the information, and then a way to upload that information. You can see there, I use Google Sheets. You can use any other spreadsheet software. Um, I like Google Sheets because it's in the cloud. It's it's not, you know, it, it, uh, it's free. Anybody can kind of uh, use it. So why wouldn't you, I, I think I do pay for Excel monthly. Like, I don't know why, um, but it's there, uh, generation wise, you're going to want to get access to some API. Uh, you can do these, you know, one at a time, but then it's, you're going to be sitting there and doing it for months when you can do it all in an afternoon, um, with OpenAI's API connected to, in this, in my case, Google Sheets. And I just, instead of trying to figure out, there, there's multiple ways you can do that. 
I said, I'm not going to spend a day trying to figure it out. I'll just purchase the the thing that already has it connected. And that's the bulk publishing spreadsheet from Ariel Phoenix. It works. I like it. It does its job. It's like $200 done. Um, and finally a way to upload, I just use WPL import. There's many other solutions. Some are free, some are paid, whatever you can get away with using the free version of WPL import. I have the paid version, uh, just because there's a few other things you can set up things like, uh, uh, periodic, uh, uploads. So like from Google sheets, if you, all you have to do is work in Google sheets to have all your content created and then every day or week or month or whatever interval you set it as WPL import will automatically run a cron job to import whatever is newly created. So you could, again, just only work in the spreadsheet and then it just continually pulls that information as you add more over time. So that's it. Google sheets, bulk publishing spreadsheet, um, which is a Google sheet and just connects open AI's API to Google sheets and then WPL import that way you can get the site, uh, or all the content onto your site. So keywords, keywords is the easiest part, you know, uh, typical SEO, editorial SEO. It's very much a case where like every single piece of content needs to perform because you're paying 30, 40, 50, hundred dollars for an article. Um, so if you want, you know, 500 articles on your site, it's not, it's going to cost you some money. However, with creating content using AI, those $30 articles you can get done for 24 cents, right? Same quality. Um, you still got to go in and edit, uh, but it, it's going to spit out. I would say looking at what it spits out and what I pay for articles, you're probably going to be looking at about eh, maybe like a two and a half, three cent per word quality wise right now with, um, what is it? Version 3.0 or whatever, not even, not even 4.0 or 3.5 as far as the open AI, uh, I don't even know what to call it, like level, uh, <laughs> performance level. Um, it's about three cents per word, um, quality content. And if you know that your niche or your, you know, you look at some competition, or whatever you're like, Oh, this can, this can compete. Okay. There you go. Um, also with the cost, you don't necessarily need to, uh, look for, again, winners. You can have 80% of your content not perform, but because it costs so little, it doesn't matter because you can make more. Um, it was inexpensive. It's almost like, um, you know, just a hundred dollar experiment. And if it hits, it hits. And if it doesn't, okay, whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, Right. So in this case, in the example I'm going to be using throughout this video, uh, microphones, this microphone is the E835 by Sennheiser. Uh, I think I've used this example many, many times over the past few years and it just works because you can see here, like this microphone versus another microphone, uh, 140 search volume, 12% uh, keyword difficulty. You know, both those numbers are, are completely fabricated. They are then it probably gets more searches or it's probably more difficult either way or less or less, whatever. Um, but looking at this, you don't necessarily need to know every single combination that shows up in this, uh, in the keyword research tools. All you need to know is, Hey, people are looking for the E835 versus SM58. Then they're probably going to be looking for the SM58 versus the, I'm making something up here the GX92, right? It might not show up in the search tools, but if people are looking for this versus that one, they're probably gonna look up that one versus those ones, right? And fortunately with, okay, kind of coming full circle, circle here, with it being so inexpensive to create this kind of content, it doesn't matter what the search volume is. Cause again, if 80% if don't get any views or they get five page views a month, 12 cents, 14 cents, it doesn't matter. Uh, or, and lastly, if you just know what your industry and what people are searching for, maybe you have another site, um, in the industry as, as is my case, you know what people are looking for. So you can kind of tailor your spreadsheet and everything like that. And you are the keywords you're targeting off of your proprietary information. So easy part keywords are not that important. They are, they, they, they play a role, but it's not as prevalent as is in editorial SEO articles. So data set, right? Boom, data sets. Uh, there's kind of some, there's levels to this shit, right? Um, 
the more private your data set is, the better off you're going to be. Because with public data sets, something you can find on Kaggle or uh, in the case of like the example site I made to kind of uh, solidify this, anybody can access that data set. And not only that, but just because you have a good data set might maybe that people aren't searching for that. Now, again, if you know the industry, you know that people are searching for the weather in uh, Colorado, Colorado Springs, whatever. Okay, you know if people are searching for that, make the site. But in the case of my example site, it was affiliate information, uh, a data set from the manufacturer with like information about the products. Um, I went through this whole process, which I'll talk about here in the next few slides, including how to set up a spreadsheet for this and just published. If people search for it, great. I don't know if they are not. I didn't look at keyword data. This was, I wanted a data set that I could use. I used it. If it ranks, it ranks, whatever. If not, cool. It was less than a hundred dollar experiment. So public data set, that's kind of level one. Problem is again, anybody can access it. Anybody can compete with you. And it's, it might already be used, used somewhere. Uh, step two would be combining multiple data sets. Um, again, if you take the weather in Colorado and fly fishing status based on weather, then you can talk about, Hey, make a site about, is it, is it good to fly fish or is the weather good enough to fly fish in Colorado Springs this weekend? Yeah. Off the belt top of that. <laughs> um, that is taking it a step further. You can also couple com compiled data sets with like getting access to an API where they will feed you updated information and you take that information that's they're feeding you, you add it on with, uh, again, some other, maybe a public data site, maybe one you've created yourself. And now you have some real proprietary information that you can share that nobody else really can access or would take some effort to replicate. Lastly, completely private data sets. And again, this kind of can come, uh, you can take public data set and you can modify it enough to where it's like, all right, like nobody has this information. I'm the only one that has, has this information or it's something where there is no data set already created. So you're creating your own and you're the only one with that information in one place, ready to go, making money from it. And perhaps that could be something like, um, Either you create it yourself, maybe you reach out to the manufacturer and get that information from them directly. Maybe you're just scraping their sites or sites with that information and they have a little bit of information here, a little bit over here, a little bit over there, and you're just putting it in one spot. Now you have this proprietary information that nobody else has access to. And then you can do some real uh, funky stuff. And that's kind of where I'm at. Um, again, started off with public data sets experiments, trying to figure things out, went to compiling and, and combining them. And now it's all right, I'm creating my own. They're going to be succinct. They're going to be tight. They're going to be accurate and in depth. And then I can recreate sites multiple times over. So that's that. So about setting up your data set. So again, if you're using like my, if you're, you know, Google, uh, Google sheets, bulk publishing spreadsheet with the API connected to uh, get our to connect the API, OpenAI API to Google Sheets and then WPL import. Here's how I'm kind of setting up my spreadsheets. Uh, column wise, it is uh, products, features, benefits, pricing, generative. Um, first column is, or sorry, rows. Yeah, row and then columns are product name and then information, information. You can see kind of how it's set up. 30 pounds, black, 20 feet long, four weeks, cooler hair, more dates, $20. Completely made up, obviously, then what does this mean? Nothing. Um, and then I like to set it up. So my H tags are the same across the board. I don't want it to, I don't want, um, I know in the bulk publishing spreadsheet, there is a way, um, for you to generate the, the outline. I don't like that because it's, it, it's not consistent with, as far as creating something from this data set with products in mind, like a review style post or whatever. I want to have my first H2s all to be the same. Second H2 all be the same product features of product one benefits of product one, the cost of product one. Then this is kind of prompt 1.0. You want to modify this to fit your needs and include information, exclude parts, whatever. Instead of saying, you know, write a, uh, how do I say this? Uh, well here, 
my prompt that I use as kind of a baseline is continuing this article by rewriting this information as a, and then have a point of view, whether it be a, as far as Mike's go, a podcast or a musician, a, a live performing artist, and write detailed paragraphs sticking to this topic only. Include HTML breaks. You can add to this, um, remove it. If you don't want HTML breaks, take them out. If you want them, keep them in. Um, if you want to make lists, if you want to bold stuff, add that in. If you want it to, um, kind of the writing style as far as right at a fifth grade reading level, right? As, uh, as an academic, you can add on to this. I just put continue this article. So if I had anything else in there, it would come out as something like it, it would include like an introduction and a conclusion underneath the age twos. And I don't want that. I just want more information pumping. And then with this, so you know what? Check this out. I'm going to have a I'm going to make a longer version of this, but I'm going to make it paid. <laughs> Learn how to use it. Once you get the, watch the videos in the bulk publishing spreadsheet. It'll teach you how to do this where it's custom nine. And in the parentheses, it is J2 and then comma B2, C2, D2, E2 for all the features. And then it'll take that information right out the article or the section of the article where it is kind of like taking that, oh, 30 pounds. Why is it beneficial at 30 pounds? And it'll talk about why it's beneficial at 30 pounds um, for product one. It does that, it just takes the information, extrapolates it, turns it into something digestible, which is great. So again, just get the spreadsheet, watch the videos. It'll teach you exactly how to use it. So I don't know why there's animation here. I didn't try to do that. So the cost for a site, right? It's about $70 that I did for my first kind of experiment with this. With 500 affiliate posts, about 80 info posts. Um, of course, as far as costs go, you're going to, that's not including hosting or domain and software and everything else. So really like 85 cause domain was about 15 and then hosting is already paid for and software is already paid for. Um, I think if this is your first foray, uh, the book publishing, publishing spreadsheet right now is like, it's a bit less than $200 worth it. Um, WP all import, you can get away with using the free version. Uh, you can't set up, I don't believe you can set up, uh, periodic uploads. It just have to be a one time download the spreadsheet, upload it there. Boom. It's there. Um, but with the paid version, you can have those periodic updates, uh, hosting. I mean, if you, first of all, if you've never made a website before, if you don't have hosting, you shouldn't be watching this. You should start with a different, different version of SEO. Get, get started, write the articles, do the article thing. Um, but yeah, it, it, two days to generate 500 articles uh, or 580 or so. Um, the affiliate posts were all just fed information. The info posts were, I literally just went to chat GPT and say, write me 40, uh, blog post ideas for the niche. And the niche was like, uh, fake hair. Cause that's the data set I could find on share sales, like fake hair and then shapewear for, for women. It's all women's stuff. Um, so yeah. And, uh, as far as this example site or this site goes, if it ranks, it ranks, if not, I don't care. I wasn't looking for keyword data for it. I was looking for a data set to, to, to use. Um, then I, and I found it and that's why I just chose it. If again, if it ranks great, makes money. Perfect. If not, oh, well, why is there information there? So what I'm doing, like, what am I going to be doing with this? So I plan on creating well, I'm, I'm working on creating a private data set with information about a niche that I, I, I know well enough to know that I can get away with doing this. I want to take that data and make multiple sites with it all from different point of views. For instance, if I was again, doing a microphone website, which I'm not, it would be, uh, you know, website one would be podcastmicrophones.com, And I would write all these articles about these microphones from a perspective of a podcaster, um, live musician, livemics.com. Same thing, but from the perspective of somebody that performs music live, uh, hip hop producer, microphones.com. Same thing, producing vocals for hip hop. Uh, thing is keeping it tight, about 20 products per vertical. Uh, I can go a little bit further, but uh, I just looking at the popularity of the, the industry, there's about 20 key players and I don't care about all the other guys just yet. Um, trying to, trying to have as much data as I can. Again, the reason I'm keeping it tight is because this isn't something where I can just download this. I have to compile it all myself. I mean, work with a VA. We're working together to get this information in one spot. Uh, some of the 
kind of data points are technical. Some are more opinion based, but again, they all kind of will feed back into creating content that is tailored to an audience that makes sense from a, you know, factual point. Um, and, and just off the rip, uh, what I have now with just 20 products, I have 20, of course, 20 reviews, E835 review, hundred information posts that I kind of have five for each where maybe not the best example here because I'm saying like the podcasting uh, perspective or actually, no, it might be, you know, is the E835 good for podcasting? Um, how do I set up my E835 for podcasting? Uh, a few information pieces that I know uh, makes sense across the board. And again, I'm going to follow the same format for all those posts with E835, SM58, every other microphone. Uh, comparison posts, which, you know, this microphone, this is versus that microphone. I, again, for those that don't follow along, my, my comparison posts are not based on opinion. They're based purely on looking at the numbers. Um, and then it's up to the reader to determine which one is better for their needs. So if they need a microphone that can, can record in this sound way or, uh, these wavelengths, sound wavelengths, and this one can do this one or this much and so much. Okay. Let them determine which microphone is best suited for their needs. And then the alternatives to posts, um, the 835 alternatives have a list of 10, 15, 20, or 19 of the other microphones. Boom. It's there. And those will just be kind of like taking a summer of each and then have internal links to like the full review posts. And there's all, there's a lot of fun things we can do here. And then I, uh, of course I can repeat this, like I said, for different audiences. So for podcasters, for live musicians, for bedroom producers, for DJs, for YouTube, boom, one data set, multiple sites. Uh, it's almost going to have to be like treated as like a PBN, even though it's not like trying to do a PBN for links, but more like a PBN for dominating the SERPs <laughs> so I can rank instead of ranking once one or one time in third place, I can rank third, seventh, and eighth, and ninth, you know what I mean? For the same terms on different sites, so no matter what they're coming to my site and I'm getting that, that commission. So that's what I got. Uh, that was one take, one take only. Like I said, I think I'm going to like do more or less the same, but actually have more detail, talk about things, have it actually refined and, and recorded appropriately, not just one take. And, and you get to hear the ums and ahs, uh, like that one right there. And uh, create something just kind of put up for sale, like something inexpensive, like under ten dollars. That way, it's easily accessible, no matter where you're at in the world. And it, it, a small, small price to pay to you know get access to. Hey, listen. The, the reason I'm working with AI content now is because as a one man army, you know, doing this out of my living room. I how can I compete? Volume. How can I compete? with volume without spending thousands and thousands of dollars every month with AI. How can I make the AI writing good by providing with information instead of just letting it run buck naked, get nasty and wild. So that's what we got going on. Uh, hopefully this was some information. Hopefully you're like, Oh man, let's get some ideas and you make some shit happen.